Hello guys, welcome to all to our channel BioVook. Today we will discuss about um, respiratory balance sheet, right? So what is respiratory balance sheet? We know that uh, in the process of respiration when we take one uh, glucose molecule that is C6H12O6, it completely undergoes oxidation and um, it releases uh, energy in the form of ATP. In, uh, uh, it takes place in different steps, right? That is glycolysis, next oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvic acid and Krebs cycle and finally electron transport system. So, let us calculate how much energy is released after the complete oxidation of one glucose molecule, right? See. So, here let us take first glycolysis. So, in glycolysis these are uh, different uh, steps, various steps where uh, you can see energy is released or energy is utilized. You know in the first step of glycolysis, glucose to glucose 6 phosphate on ATP is utilized. So, minus ATP and then in third step also fructose 6 phosphate to fructose 1 6 bisphosphate. Here also one ATP is utilized. So, minus ATP and then whenever gap that means glyceraldehyde phosphate converts into 1 to 3 de phosphoglyceraldehyde, then uh, NADH plus H plus is forming, right? So, actually here 2 NADH plus H plus because here one is uh, from uh, GAP and afterwards uh, DHEP when converts into GAP and uh, again it is going to uh, perform the same reactions, right? And then uh, another reaction that is 1,3 diphosphoglyceric acid to 3 phosphoglyceric acid. Here this is actually called a substrate level phosphorylation here also 2 ATPs are forming, right? And then uh, phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvic acid this is the last step of glycolysis where again uh, substrate level phosphorylation here 2 ATP molecules are also producing right. So, totally if you calculate uh, so just uh, these are the 2 minus ATPs let us cross these 2 plus 2 ATP and minus 2 ATP and what is the net gain of ATP in uh, this glycolysis net gain of energy in glycolysis that is nothing but 2 NADH plus H plus and uh, 2 ATP molecules right and as we know that 1 NADH plus H plus molecule is equal to 3 ATP molecules, right? So, for 2 NADH uh, plus H plus means 6 ATP molecules. So, here this is 6 ATP molecules and here 2 ATP molecules. Totally 8 ATP molecules are there in glycolysis or produced in glycolysis. So, let us take uh, the next step that is uh, oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvic acid. When pyruvic acid is produced off at the end of glycolysis, then it undergoes oxidative decarboxylation and it converts into acetyl coenzyme A, right? And here for each pyruvic acid one NADH plus H plus is forming, here two pyruvic acid molecules are there. So, two NADH plus H plus and as we know that one NADH plus H plus is equal to three ATP molecules. So, totally here six ATP molecules, right? And next whenever oxygen is available to this uh, acetyl coenzyme A, then it enters what is called as Krebs cycle, right? Into mitochondria. So, after the formation of pyruvic acid whenever oxygen is there then it, uh, it starts these uh, reactions that is called as Krebs cycle and Krebs cycle takes place in mitochondrial matrix, right? <coughs> so, in Krebs cycle we can see in uh, various reactions uh, uh, energy is formed in the form of uh, NADH plus H plus or GTP or FADH2. See here isocitrate to oxalosuccinic acid here one NADH plus H plus that is equal to 3 ATP molecules. Then alpha ketoglutaric acid to succinyl coenzyme A, one more NADH plus H plus that is equal to 3 ATP molecules and then succinyl coenzyme A to succinic acid. Here one GTP is formed, GTP is equal to ATP. Whenever GTP forms from GDP, then what happens? After the formation of GTP, it again loses its uh, inorganic phosphate and that inorganic phosphate is taken by ADP molecule to produce ATP. So, anyhow GTP means one ATP, right? And then succinic acid to humeric acid. Here one FADH2 is forming. FADH2 it is equal to 2 ATP molecules. See here 2 ATP molecules. And then the last step of um, Krebs cycle that is malic acid to oxalastic acid. One NADH plus H plus that is equal to 3 ATP molecules. So, totally from here to here that is uh, one pure Krebs cycle. How many ATP molecules are forming? 3 plus 3 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 totally. 12 ATP molecules are forming from each Krebs cycle here. That means from acetyl coenzyme A to oxalastic acid again, right? And uh, we know that uh, here uh, two pyruvic acid molecules are there at the end of uh, glycolysis. For each pyruvic acid, one uh, Krebs cycle and uh, 
two pyruvic acid means Krebs cycle it have to occur two times that's why another 12 ATP molecules here 12 plus 12 24 ATP molecules. So, let us total the uh, all ATP molecules so producer from glycolysis and oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvic acid then Krebs cycle right. So, that is uh, 24 ATPs from Krebs cycle 6 ATPs from oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvic acid and 8 ATPs from glycolysis actually totally 38 ATPs molecules are there. But here 38 ATP molecules is wrong answer actually why because in glycolysis whenever NADH plus H plus is formed actually we know that glycolysis takes place in cytoplasm. So, this NADH plus H plus which formed in the cytoplasm it have to enter mitochondria for this purpose it requires energy that means it is energy required process one ATP molecule is utilized to transfer of one NADH plus H plus from cytoplasm to mitochondria. So, two NADH plus H plus are forming in cytoplasm. So, they required two ATP molecules to enter mitochondria right for oxidation to participate in electron transport system. That is why here one NADH plus H plus molecule requires one ATP molecule. So, totally two ATP molecules are requiring here. So, just you do it minus 2 ATP molecules 38 minus 2 36 ATP molecules right. So, this is the final answer that is 36 ATP molecules are forming whenever glucose molecule undergoes complete oxidation ok not 38 molecules 36 ATP molecules and remember one more very important thing that is NADH plus H plus which is forming in glycolysis it yields only 2 ATP molecules already I told the reason also right. So, this is the topic about the respiratory balance sheet right thank you so much.